fairly stressful, rigid, and inflexible. Over my 26 years of teaching, I have gradually altered my approach through trial and error to one that is far less dogmatic, prescriptive, and threatening. Instead of creating <laughs> to students, that is, um, instead of creating and myself, I suppose, instead of creating a climate of expectation in the classroom, I deliberately set up a relaxed atmosphere of inquiry and investigation. Instead of presenting myself as an expert, I acknowledge my strengths and weaknesses. As a result of this change in approach, I learn as much as I teach, and I am more authentic, revealing gaps in my knowledge and enthusiasm for learning without apology. Rather than a generic one-size-fits-all approach, my teaching is student-centered. I am less demanding, and the classroom is not a place where students prove their artistic worthiness, but rather a place of mutual learning, sharing, and creativity. Ironically, students are motivated to work even harder in this environment. Let me present you with a hypothetical scenario. Let's say you are teaching a class where there are 20 students sitting at tables staring at you first day of class. What do you do? Well, you have a choice, and I've characterized it with these two polarities. You can be their master or be their mentor. My comments today will center on an analysis of the contrast between two opposing ways of teaching, which I label master and mentor. You could use different words, but that's how I've characterized it. The master is an older model of teaching that I first used to create a boundary between myself and students. Whereas the mentor is how I currently teach and believe is a far more useful model for teaching. The master's teaching is egocentric or self-centered, and I don't mean that in a judgmental way, but it's centered on the teacher. She, he conveys to students that all knowledge rests with her or him, and regards students as empty slates. It, this applies to parenting as well, by the way. <laughs> uh, she, he has little to no interest in students' past experience as in, uh, and is intent on showing students the right path. Ultimately, this approach to teaching does not foster an ideal learning situation and is characterized by the following practices. Speaking far more than listening. Judging rather than encouraging. Focusing on weaknesses instead of strengths. Judging work without student input. Treating students' questions as individual issues and not sharing them with the rest of the class. And finally, not revealing much if any personal information to students, and only sharing one's success stories, never the failures. The master believes authority is important for respect, and remaining authoritative requires distance between teacher and student. The master lets students know she, he expects respect. The master treats the class as a homogenous body and does not get to know individual students. The master teaches to one style of learning and does not accommodate other styles. The master is a strong taskmaster, interested mainly in the end product of students' work. Students know that excellence is expected and that they must strive to please the master. They know that they will be penalized if they do not live up to expectations. The master lets students know she, he is very busy and is rarely available outside of class time. The master never shares what she, he is working on with students. <laughs> A stressful climate where students feel intimidated is the result of this type of teaching. A climate where students are defeated before they begin working and a climate where they learn nothing 
about what they might experience as a professional artist and what it's like to be passionate about art and learning. Done with the master now. <laughs> the mentor. The mentor's teaching, on the other hand, is student-centered. She, he conveys empathy to the student and lets the student know that she, he is a lifelong learner. The mentor does so by listening to students with curiosity and receptivity, eager to understand them and to learn from their feedback. The mentor empowers students by encouraging them to make judgments on their work and that of their peers during group critiques and even by participation in group grading. She, he also does this by giving encouraging and constructive comments to students and focusing on the positive when, when evaluating work. The mentor asks students if they need clarification on instructions and takes responsibility when the instructions are not clear, modifying them so that everyone in the class understands. By sharing personal information, when appropriate, and professional experiences, both good and bad, the mentor gives students a broader picture of what it is like to be an artist or designer. The mentor believes that respect flows both ways, from teacher to student and back. The mentor has an open door policy and lets students know she, he is available to be contacted outside of class time. The mentor treats students as individuals and tries to get to know each student. The mentor wants students to produce excellent work, but is also concerned about the experience the student has in creating the work. She, he tries to get students excited and involved in the process of making art. So, I think it's interesting to reflect on our teaching styles and the impact they have on students' learning. I am advocating for the mentorship approach, but perhaps there are times when the master approach is more effective. I'm not sure. We can talk about that. Hopefully we can discuss this later and arrive at some exciting possibilities. Thank you.